Dear Roni Abovitz, it's been a while since I've sent a transmission. A lot's happened, you know? Um, I think I'm, I've gone through like a bit of a existential crisis lately. I, I gave, I kind of like the whole prismic like 3D imaging thing, um, that whole commercial paradigm. There's a part of it that just sickens me so much that I don't know if I can work on this project sometimes anymore, but I wonder if you ever feel that, like kind of this like, there is a massive, like, this is a massive opportunity to elevate the human imagination, the human spirit through augmented reality, you know, just to be able to overlay this this imagination on top of our world to like amplify the human expression and I I mean I get it I get it at a deep level and what it's gonna make possible both good and bad both good and bad both beautiful and ugly there's so much that's gonna happen I think we both know that I think everybody in this and you know Graham Devine Wallace Poltier it was amazing to see you guys at at um, at VRX last year, and I I don't know if you remember what we talked about, but like we have this responsibility, this very deep, it's it's nothing, it, it is absolutely a spiritual, physical responsibility to our Earth right now and our human race, and you guys sit at the helm of immense possibility and power with that. I mean, I can see all of the. I know the, uh, that in just a number of years, these things will go from headsets to contacts to, I mean, there's been so many times where these beautiful things have been abused by the power structure, have been abused by the sort of economic elite to reinforce a slavery onto human beings who in turn enslave animals, plants, everything else. And I mean, with this technology, I see beautiful things. I see the possibility for us in years to be in these sort of like very lightweight body suits, except, you know, just a millim you know, sub millimeters thick graphene, whatever. I see this possibility of being able to see the world's information to be so lightweight that we almost don't need to live in homes anymore in a way you know, like able to, um, you know, see what, uh, to make choices, uh, right within our visual sphere to be able to, um, see entertainment possibilities are endless. And I, I, I never stop thinking about them. They never stop coming into my mind, but every time they do, I'm confronted by this thing. And it's like, whether I'm the person that gets to execute these ideas or not, maybe the, I just go and talk to people about them and send them into the ether, the web sphere, the, the people that I, people at meetings, bus stops, whatever. I have been preaching the gospel of this whole virtual and all, this, this sort of technotopia future in which we can purify the planet, we can replant the forest, we can use, you know, drone planting systems, uh, you know, being able to make, you can essentially out of these new nanofibers, we can build spaceships, we can build, um, we can create robotics that will solve the deepest problems, but it goes back down to the fact that like, and yes, I acknowledge this is sort of an existential crisis, and I know this probably sounds far-fetched, but I think about the ways we've even enslaved electrons, we've enslaved plants into our homes are built from them we've enslaved animals by you know through the the commercial landscape of mass production and will the same thing happen will this i mean and now the internet youtube etc it is all it, it, it's all being regulated controlled who sees what and when that's going like please protect augmented reality please protect this thing that can be used for such beautiful good or such insidious fog that could be wrapped around the perception of humanity. And you know, I mean, you know how this, you know, you know these things. I know, I know you have to struggle with this too. I, even though I, I know I'm in a, I, I know what God shows me. I know what the cosmic, uh, fractal mother and father of, 
of existence shows me through the channeled ideas I, I have, and, and I'm sure you do as a visionary. I know you are a company of visionaries, Magic Leap. All of you guys know. I almost feel like I need to go on this, like, I need to start taking what's in my mind and pushing it out and stop trying to... This world has got us peddling our ideas for, for um, the chance at startup success. Why do we care about startup success? Why do we care about being a unicorn, making a billion dollars? Like, well, our investors care about that. Most people that have skill sets like, you know, in... in in, in these areas have, have fallen under the spell of that allure to create the next big disruptive technology rather than creating the next like dis, disruptive evolution of, of imagination uh, and just for imagination's sake, not because, hey, we can turn those, those impressions from the, the natural world every, you know, if you can't leave home without your headset, which I believe will be the case in just a few years because it's so fucking useful. It's just so, your calls here, your navigation there, your, your um, I mean, yes, it means we don't have to have screens in our face, we just have lasers in our eye. By the way, I hope that is healthy. And, you know, I mean, after spending a lot of time with, you know, Tom Furness and, and, and uh, you know, I know that I know that there's good heart behind this. So that's why I trust you guys and that's why I want to connect to you guys. But I'll stop trying to like, I've been trying to get a meeting with you, Roni, for some time. I've asked, you know, people at your company, I've sent you videos, I don't know if you receive them through, you know, Twitter and YouTube and I had the impulse two and a half years ago so many times, like almost a spiritual impulse, like a... Anyway, it is what it is, and, and I, now I find myself like divided between investors, business, at like both start, I mean, I'm trying to do too many things. I, ha I have this like, you know, legal cannabis farm going, which is kind of hilarious. <laughs> I mean, it kind of, it's, I suppose it's fitting. What am I putting into the world, um, you know, something that hopefully can achieve another form of augmented reality, right, that we all know. We probably wouldn't have found, discovered if it, if it wasn't for some mild level of, like, psychedelic exploration. It's where a lot of those, like, those ideas and those, those possibilities can pour into you. At least for me. I don't know how it was for you and, and all of you guys. Um, but, you know, I'm putting that into the world. I, and now I feel the whole, like... <clears throat> How do I make this social purpose? How do I take prismic and make it something good? How do I take what I know, what I know? I mean, we are in a very crucial time in human history. It's such a crucial time. It is so crucial. Because, I mean, we, we sit on the apex of one of the most, like, um, elaborate, you know, elaborate, uh, experience of reality guidance systems ever coming from a certain like elite uh, plan that filters down through you know we take it for granted right cars roads cell phones data communication screens work um, efficiency production how can we produce we've been indoctrinated to produce yes I know this sounds like this is I'm aware of the frame the fa fact that what I am spouting off sounds a little bit I'm not going to be self-conscious about it anymore. It's just, it is my perception of reality that there is something potentially being that we have to, that we have to fight, which is that we, or we have to resist, which is this sort of like taking magical things and peddling them for, for financial gain. And I, a financial gain is not a bad thing if it's used right, if it's used well, if we take I mean, if you take what you have right now, you have the platform to literally save humanity in a big way. I believe this. And I mean, it's, it comes down to you and what Magic Leap's doing. I also believe that the, you know, um, 
I mean, I think that healing work is going to be another vast area of expansion, you know, linking all the data of like people's genetics, their ailments, and finding like people in the, in the world that have those same ailments, uh, taking that data and actually creating meaningful solutions based on, you know, knowing, uh, you know, rather than, than having to count on the whole like paradigm of, of the, uh, um, the current medical system, which is highly institutionalized and highly inefficient and very much out, out for profit, no matter what the cost. I hope that changes too. I hope that we start, we take away this factory farming bullshit and start to treat animals fairly. Like uh, we, we let this world thrive. We absolutely can. We could be living in permaculture landscapes, forests, like things greater than anyone's ever seen where the world should be um, you know, maneuverable, edible, not so stressful for people. Um, you should be able to live off the grid if you wish, or on the grid if you wish, but either way, like, this, <sighs> I'm on a rant, I, I, I see that now. I just wish at some point we could have a conversation. And I know I'm just a, like, I am not just another startup guy. I am not just another person pawning what, what this universe pours in through me just to, to make another, um, and maybe that's why I haven't been successful in business yet. And, and because the whole time I'm asking myself, why am I trying to be successful in business? Is that something that was, it was, it, it, it's something, a uh, programming that was built into me, built into you, built into all of us. We all came from that. But with crowdfunding, with better voting systems, with better uh, ability for, on the granular level, people to make choices to guide, you know, there's a lot of good people. And there's a lot of brilliant people. And, and I feel that so often in history we've been suppressed. Or those of us that made it through drank the dark Kool-Aid at the end where, you know, yes, the, the billions will come your way when you have that. And I just pray, I, I, I hope that every day you and everyone at your company realizes the immense responsibility you have. And I, and I, I, I pray that you take that seriously. And um, I respect you as a visionary. I, I don't respect a lot of I don't respect a lot of CEOs of a lot of corporations right now. I even look at like I look at Facebook and how they've 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 just sort of entered everybody's lives without them knowing through their terms and conditions and and not just Facebook but it, not to put the just to put the own the issue on them. It comes from a lot of directions. I mean, they're getting pressure from all the you know, they get pressure from governmental agencies, things even higher than governmental agencies to um to fork over the data and like and it's just uh, until that is a clean landscape and not one owned by more of this like kind of like uber force that that drives um that doesn't always ask the question is this really good could we do this could we bring this to humanity without extorting them could we <sighs> Anyway, I just, I pray that you don't let that darkness in and that you know you'll be surrounded by people who will try to get you to. When Alibaba came flooding in, I was like, fuck. And the other thing is like, I, I, but who am I to say that? I'm peddling what I've tried to build on all, because I went through an accelerator program, I went through college, I went through all those things that told, a, told us to go build big businesses. And that is the way that you change the world. That is the way that you get ahead. I never wanted to get ahead, but I did see that I'd have to work within the apparatus of like socioeconomic structure to be able to do something game changing. And I imagine that you are on that level. I know it. When I talked to Graham, I knew it. I was like, I, you feel that glow in someone. You feel that glow in their eyes when it's true. And, and I, I believe that, um, I believe that you guys are going to do something great. Um, 
I normally keep this all in into myself, and I doubt you'll see this, but I, I'm still gonna send it out. I'll put it out there. Um, anyway, Sir Roni, good sir, I, uh, I send you all the support I can into the, into the metaverse. I'll meet you in the metaverse someday, but not yet, maybe. All right, well, warm vibes. Straight from the mind, heart, and soul of Derek, sometimes known as Radrick, the cosmonaut. I will, uh, I'll keep meditating on all this, and I'll send you another transmission when, when, uh, when I'm called to. All right, all the best. Take care.